Hey guys, I'm out here in South Florida where Hyundai has invited me to take a look at the first ever Hyundai venue. As you can see, I'm in a parking garage because the weather isn't always predictable out here in South Florida, but let's get started. Now, as you may know, the crossover segment is rapidly growing here in North America, so it comes as no surprise that Hyundai is trying to fill in every little gap in their lineup with a crossover vehicle. Just last year, Hyundai introduced two first ever crossover vehicles, one of which was the Hyundai Palisade, which is the biggest SUV Hyundai has to offer, and actually the biggest SUV Hyundai has produced here in North America. Now we have another vehicle, which decided to make an appearance here in North America. This is the 2020 Hyundai Venue, and this is the smallest and most inexpensive crossover SUV that Hyundai has to offer. So is the Hyundai Venue enough to break through the raging wave of subcompact utility vehicles, or is it just gonna get washed ashore? Well, let's find out. Alright guys, so let's first look at the exterior styling of the 2020 venue. So looking at the front fascia here, the most prominent thing you are going to notice is this grille right here. And this is Hyundai's cascading grille design. It has these strong, bold shoulder lines coming right here, pretty much quenching in the lower fascia of the grill and then the upper portion is going to bulge out and merge into your incandescent turn signal indicators right up here. These are only going to be incandescent all across the Hyundai lineup. No LED turn signals will be available for the venue. But looking back at your grill design, this has a plus cross chrome accenting grill. Honestly, I really like the look of the grill right here. It definitely gives a little bit more of a bold and prominent stance. You also have your large Hyundai logo right there. And unlike the majority of the competition, you don't actually have an outline to your grill. Instead, Hyundai indents it into the front of the vehicle. So it definitely gives this grill, once again, a little bit more of that bold, prominent stance. And then your bumper is going to be bulging out all the way up to here all the way around the grill. So that's definitely a really unique feature. But looking back over here, like I said, this is your turn signal indicator and it is going to be divorced from your actual main headlight module. So right over here, if you go for the SEL with the premium package or your denim model, you will get full LED headlights. So right on the outboard portion, you'll have your projector beam LEDs and the inner portion, you have your reflector beam LEDs. And you also have an LED daytime running light, which is going to run around here in a cubic shape. Hyundai says that this cubic shape is definitely going to give the venue a little bit more of that technology and youthful style to the front fascia. And looking in the lower fascia, you're not going to have any fog lights on this model, but you will have a wind air curtain right here. So wind will be able to pass through here, down the side of the vehicle, able to cool off your brakes, helping with aerodynamics and fuel efficiency. And then you have a black plastic cutout right here. I would have liked to have seen Hyundai implement this as a body color accent, especially since it has that same plus cross accents that's happening up here in the grill. And one more thing I wanted to mention about this grill is that I feel like it looks like a woven wicker basket. And I feel like that definitely offers a little bit more of a mature element to the front fascia as well. So it's not all youthful, it still has that mature and sophisticated appearance as well. But let's go ahead and check out the side profile and see what Hyundai has going on over there. Now I know Hyundai is touting the 2020 venue to be more towards a millennial type of demographic, but I have to say I really like the overall IMS design that Hyundai is implementing here. And if you're unfamiliar as to what IMS is, because I was unfamiliar until the press conference I attended the other day, IMS stands for iconic, modern, and stylish. And that's definitely what the venue boasts. It has a very iconic side profile, almost reminiscent of Mini Cooper and even the Kia Soul. I really like the overall boxy and quirky style that 
this vehicle is boasting. Also, it has a very modern look with lots of horizontal lines and not overly styled by any stretch of the imagination and stylish. I mean, you see this rolling down the road and you look and wonder what it is, especially in this bright green apple color. But focusing at the exact design details on this side profile, you are gonna notice you have 17 inch alloy wheels. These are going to be standard on your SEL premium as well as your denim models. If you go for your base SE, these are going to be 15 inch steel wheels. If you go for your SEL, they will be 15 inch alloy wheels. But these are going to be the largest wheels available. These are going to be 17 inches. But moving towards the front, you're going to notice that it has a relatively long hood and the front fascia here is going to be blunt. So it has a blunt front fascia and a pretty long hood. So it gives it once again more of that modern and athletic front profile. And it makes it look rather sleek thanks to this character line which starts over here at the hood crease and runs all the way down the side of the vehicle meets up with your rear taillights back there coming lower in the facial you have this black cladding which is going to run around your wheel wells and then arc up right here almost imitating a catamaran line right here so catamaran lines are basically a line that comes out and then arcs down and you can see that very prominently here on the side profile so once again it accentuates the length of this vehicle and then coming out to the back you have a roof line that does not slope down too much. The actual physical roof line stays relatively static and horizontal, but your window line is what's going to arc down, so it gives the illusion that the side profile is sloping towards the rear, and that's definitely something you want to see in this type of class so it doesn't look super tall and boxy. It has a nice sleek side profile. You also have these roof rails, which have a nice silver accenting to them. And then coming all the way out to the back, you have this crease line which is going to arc down because on your denim model you actually have a two-tone color accent but if you go for any other trim levels you're not going to get that two-tone color accent definitely would like to see hyundai implement that on more models in the future so this roof line is white and it's really it's seen best in the denim edition in which it has this white roof line which runs all the way over it drops ever so slightly over here near the window but the actual roof line keeps it very straight shape to it so it's not going to eat into your cargo area and then right here it has a, a aggressive dip and then a pull back up and this is a shark fin design it's pretty much an inverse upside down shark fin design so right here you have your shark fin antenna and then over here is just like a shark fin but upside down and when you look at this from the side profile it gives the vehicle a lot more of that stable look and it doesn't make it look as tall of a body but the venue is actually going to be a little bit shorter the venue is actually I believe the shortest offering in the subcompact utility vehicle segment. So as far as size goes, I mean, it's not going to be a huge difference, but you are going to notice that the, that the venue has a lot more of its cabin pushed towards the rear of the vehicle. Well, the kicks has a little bit more going towards the front and a little bit of an extended hood. But all in all, looking at the side profile, I am quite impressed with what Hyundai has to offer to the segment. It definitely stands out especially if they offer more bright colors like this, I feel like this vehicle is definitely going to appeal to a younger generation and not just the younger generation, but people who really want to stand out in their vehicle and still be able to have practicality without breaking the bank. All right, so let's talk about the rear fascia of the 2020 Hyundai Venue. So Hyundai definitely did quite a bit of work to accentuate the overall width of this vehicle. And one of those character elements that will help with that are lots of these horizontal lines happening out back. You have this strong horizontal line, which is going to merge out of your taillights, run all the way over your Hyundai logo, and then meet over there on the other side. You also have another one right here, another one right here. So you have lots of horizontal lines helping to accentuate this width. Also, your taillights are going to be located very towards the outboard of the vehicle. You also have this strong hip line right here, which also helps accentuate the overall width. So these taillights are cubic shaped, very similar, pretty much reminiscent and mimicking what's found up on the front. You have incandescent turn signal indicators inside of here. No LEDs are available for 2020, but you have an actual LED taillight right here. So it's an LED combination light. On the top, you have a strip. On the bottom, you have another strip. And then this is diagonal, so it gives it like a Z shape. Looks really attractive in my opinion. All in all, making this vehicle look a lot more macho than this actual footprint may suggest. You also have this bold cameraman line right there with this black plastic accenting, more of that plus accenting out here on the outboard. I would once again like to see Hyundai implement maybe a body colored insert in this lower fascia or even some of the silver painted accenting in this upper portion, just help to break it up a little bit. Above that, you have a reflector beam running around your incandescent reverse light. 
and that's also going to be in a cubic shape. But down here in the lower fascia, you have sort of like a mini rear diffuser, which will help break it up, and your exhaust pipe is going to be hidden over there on the other side. But looking back up here on your real tailgate, you have your Hyundai logo as well as your Benue logo, and I really like how it has white accenting in the center. I thought this was unique to the Denim model, but you actually find this all across the Hyundai Venue lineup. Looks really, really attractive looking in my opinion. And then right here you have your trunk release button, your standard rear windshield wiper, and all in all, the rear fascia of this vehicle is simplistic, but still stylish. So to open up the trunk, all you have to do is come right down here and push on the rubberized pad in this nice indent. Once you open it on up, you are going to be looking at 18.7 cubic feet of space, which is actually a pretty decent amount of space for this class. It's definitely going to be right in line with the majority of the boxy competitors. If you're looking at more of the car-like competitors like the Mazda CX-3, this is going to offer quite a bit more space. But your floor can actually be pushed down into the ground. You'd say you're trying to carry something that's a little bit taller and you need a little bit more clearance. You could pull this out. And this is a really neat cargo maximizing feature. And if you slide it into the bottom, it's actually going to give you a deeper load floor, which is a pretty neat feature. And also, which is another really cool feature in my opinion, is you can actually take this cover off and stow it away against this back portion here as well. So let's say you don't really have anywhere to put this cargo cover and you don't want to just throw it in your garage and forget about it or anything like that. You can slide it right down here and it's going to be out of the way and you could still put lots of tall things in here with this floor all the way down in its lowest position. But let's talk about how much space you're going to have once you fold down these rear seats. So to fold down the rear seats is really easy. It's a 60-40 split. Come over here to the right, you pull it up, push forward. And on the other side, you also pull up and push forward. Once you fold down the rear seats, you are going to be looking at 31.9 cubic feet of space, which once again is relatively competitive with more of the smaller offerings in the class. If you're looking at some of the larger entries, this is going to offer a little bit less space. If you're looking at something like a Kia Soul, the Kia Soul is going to offer just about 10 cubic feet more of space. But all in all, the Hyundai Venue is in a smaller category and sort of a lower price tag as well. So definitely don't expect to be comparing this to some of the larger offerings out there. But as you can see right here, it has quite a bit of a lip from your cargo area to your rear seat backs, but you can pretty much eliminate that by pulling back out your floor and putting it right here. So now it's going to give you a nice flat transition from your cargo load floor to your rear seat back. So if you have something really long, it just slides right in. So this floor is definitely extremely versatile as well as that portion that comes into here. So all in all, this cargo area is pretty spacious and relatively class competitive if you're looking for a vehicle that's you know fuel efficient but still has a decent amount of space for grocery getting and even your trip to your favorite department store. All right, so as far as the rear lift over height goes inside of the 2020 Hyundai Venue, it has a decent rear lift over height. It's a little bit on the high side for my liking, but I could totally see the same point that Hyundai was coming with, especially with this large bubbly rear bumper. It's definitely going to be an advantage when you are driving in an urban setting. For example, if you were to get into a rear end collision, your rear bumper will be the first thing to get impacted, while a lot of these other vehicles, which tend to have very small dimensions, have their tailgate come as far out to the rear as possible, therefore making it a lot more susceptible to getting damaged in a rear end collision. But here inside the venue, you have a bubbly rear bumper, so it is going to protrude out from the rear a little bit more and your damage cost will be a lot lower in the event of a rear-end collision. But one thing I would have liked to see seen Hyundai implement in the future on the Hyundai Venue is a power-assisted tailgate. Some of its competitors offer that as optional equipment at higher end trim levels, but here we are in pretty much the top of the line model that Hyundai has to offer for 2020, and that is not available and I would definitely like to see that in the future. All right, guys, now at this point in the video, I would truly appreciate it if you could please subscribe to the Driving Be Driven YouTube channel. Also, let me know what you think about the Hyundai Venue so far. Is it a yay or a nay? Comment down below. But without further ado, let's continue with this video. All right, so now let's look at what's under the hood of the 2020 Venue. So to open up the hood, all you have to do is locate your Hyundai logo, come directly above it, slightly to the right. You want to push to the left and lift up your hood. Your hood's a little bit on the heavy side, but honestly, it's not too much of a surprise since a lot of your front fascia is taken up by this hood, especially since it ends right here at the grill. But opening up the hood, you don't have any hydraulic hood struts. You will have to put up a manual prop right here. So you lock it right into place. 
And once you have your hood up, you are going to be looking at a 1.6 liter four cylinder engine. And this is a part of Hyundai's new family of engines. This is called their Smart Stream engine. It's replacing the previous Gamma engine type. And this is going to be a new DPI setup, which is direct port injection, as opposed to the previous system, which was the GDI, which is gasoline direct injection. This engine is going to produce 121 horsepower and 113 pound-feet of torque. But all in all, Hyundai says that this DPI engine is going to make this vehicle more fuel efficient than the one it replaces, as well as offer a bit more of a smooth power feel. Now, as far as transmission options go, your standard transmission is going to be a six-speed manual transmission only found on your SE model. But you can get an optional IVT, which is Intelligent Variable Transmission. Basically think of it as a CVT. It has one continuous gear, but it mimics an eight-speed automatic transmission. Now we did do a drive review inside of the Hyundai venue. It's a very thorough drive review, and we did take a road trip out to the Keys. So definitely click up here in the right-hand corner of your screen to definitely see how this engine performs in both an urban setting as well as on the freeway in more of a coasting setting as well. Acceleration, handling, all of that stuff is covered in that video. But like I said, this is a new family of engines and Hyundai is very excited to roll this out. The first vehicle to get this engine was actually the Hyundai Accent and the new Sonata also has a 1.6 liter but it is going to be turbocharged. Instead of this vehicle, it's not going to be turbocharged. But all in all, that's it for the engine under the hood. It's relatively class competitive and as far as fuel economy numbers go, we are going to go and look at the fuel pump and I'll give you a little bit more information about that. All right, so let's talk about the fuel economy that the 2020 venue is able to achieve according to the EPA. So right here is your fuel tank door. You just open it right on up. It has a twist cap design right here. And once you take that twist cap design off, you can hook it right inside of this portion to prevent it from slapping on your paint down there. Now, as far as fuel economy goes for that base manual transmission, you are going to be looking at 27 miles per gallon in the city, 35 miles per gallon on the highway, with a combined rating of 30 miles per gallon. If you go for the IVT automatic transmission, you will be looking at 30 miles per gallon in the city, 34 on the highway, and 32 miles per gallon combined. Standard on your manual transmission as well as your normal CVT on your SE model, you are not going to have a snow mode available. But if you go for your SEL as well as your denim models, you will have an optional snow mode. So there's no all-wheel drive available for 2020, just front-wheel drive. But Hyundai says that offering a snow mode allows for this vehicle to be a bit more fuel efficient since power doesn't have to be sent to all four wheels and it doesn't have to be an all-wheel drive vehicle all the time. It's only going to be front-wheel drive and whenever it senses a slip, you put it into snow mode and it'll pretty much prevent you from slipping around when you are in inclement climate. So all in all, I feel like that was a really smart choice on Hyundai's end. Maybe in the future they might implement an all-wheel drive model, but as of now for 2020, there's no all-wheel drive. And once we take it out on the road, in my full drive review, the road trip review, we did a real-world test of how much you can actually get out of this vehicle as far as fuel economy goes. And you'll actually be quite surprised as to what we were able to achieve. But that's pretty much it for fuel economy. All right, so let's talk about the interior inside of the 2020 venue. So first looking at your door panel here, this is the SEL with the premium package. So pretty much the most expensive model besides the denim. And looking at your door panel here, you have a two-tone accenting since we have the gray with the black interior. So this gray portion right here will be for your armrest. It's going to be a hard plastic. Would have liked to have seen at least this to be a polyurethane rubberized texture right here where your elbow would rest. And the majority of this will also all be hard touch plastic. It will be extremely easy to clean. And you have to keep in mind the overall price category of this vehicle. You will have an auto up and down for your driver's window. All the other windows will be powered, not auto up down. And you also have your window locks and all of those other controls. Your door handle has a pretty neat look to it. And if you go for the SEL model and above, you will get six speakers. Right here you have a sub tweeter and you also have another speaker down there, a bottle holder and a little cubby. And to get inside the vehicle, this is your smart key right here. And all you have to do is just walk up to the vehicle, press the black button on the door and it will unlock the doors for you. So that's also a really neat feature. So let's hop on inside of the cabin. And stepping on inside of the cabin, I mean, you step right inside and actually have the seat raised pretty high and you could just get right in. I'm six feet tall and getting inside of this cabin is not an issue at all. You have this nice cutout right here. So you just slide right on inside. 
All right, so let's talk about the front seat comfort instead of the 2020 Hyundai Venue. So on your driver's side, you are going to get a manual six-way seat. So right down here, you pull the seat forward, it will move it forward. Over here, you have your backrest controls, and you also have a height adjustability here as well. So all in all, it has a decent range of motion. Actually, you can push this all the way back in its tracks, bring it all the way low or all the way up in the air. So it has a really good range of motion. As far as your steering wheel goes, it also pushes in and out quite a bit and up and down, so it's tilting as well as telescoping. That's definitely something nice to see in this class of vehicle. Another thing I did want to mention is the overall tumble home inside of this car, which is pretty much right above the window line, how much the windows cave in. It's actually very vertical inside of here, so it gives you more of that SUV boxy feel. You can move around inside of here. You don't feel cramped and compact, so I really like how Hyundai was able to implement that inside of the venue as well. Now, as far as your passenger side goes, it is going to be a four-way seat. No matter which trim level you go for, it's only gonna be forward and backwards motion as well as your backrest, you could tilt it forward as well as backwards. You're not gonna get any height adjustability over there. Definitely would like to see that as an option sometime in the future. But all in all, sitting inside of the cabin, like I said, it's spacious, it's accommodating. And for this class of vehicle, it definitely will be more than sufficient. Although I would like to see on higher end trim levels, maybe on this SCL Premium or possibly even on the denim, I would like to see some type of lumbar control, at least something to push it in and out. That would definitely be a neat feature if they had like a mini, a mini power button or a rotator here to help with lumbar support. We did take this on a road trip, so definitely see we talk about how well the seats are in that road trip video. But all in all, it's ergonomic, spacious, and pretty comfortable inside of this subcompact utility vehicle. Closing up the door. Very solid for you know this type of segment of vehicle. And all you have to do is make sure you have this key fob inside of the interior, put your foot on the brake, and press this push button right here to start it up. All right, so we have the vehicle on. You notice just how you know it has a very upscale and techy feel. And talking about techy, this center stack is really quite impressive for this segment as well. This is actually a standard touchscreen on the 2020 venue. Your navigation is not going to be standard. If you want navigation, you have to step up to the SEL with the premium package, but the overall size will be standard. The same interface will be on your base model, will come with standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. In the future, I would like to see Hyundai implement a wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as well as a charging pad down here, especially since millennials and Gen Zers will really like to appreciate having the ability to wireless charge. But right down here, you have a traditional gear selector, park reverse, neutral, and drive. Very easy to use, a nice leather wrapped boot and a glossy accent on the top. Focusing back over here behind your gear selector, you have a USB port, which you would plug in to hook up to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, as well as your charging port right there. And you have a 12 volt power outlet. Coming above there, you have a nice clean center stack. I like how they have all the radio and multimedia controls located in the upper portion of your dash and then lower portion in this black, black cutout, you have all of your AC controls. So as far as your AC controls go, they're very easy and simplistic to use. Right over here, you have the temperature and it'll all be displayed in here. I thought this was a, a dial at first, but this is a static portion. This is just a visual and I like how they made it circular. It really looks neat. So you have a single zone climate control inside of here, but it is automatic climate control. So you can make it as cold as you want or as warm as you want. Obviously, we don't want it warm out here in South Florida. But over here in the center, like I said, you have a digital display. And then right over here in the top, you have a ring that'll show you your fan speed, which will be controlled over here on this side. You have a front and rear window defroster. Looking up here, like I said, standard eight inch touchscreen, optional navigation. Inside of here, you have a nice volume knob, as well as a two knob over here on the right, your hazards button in the center. And I really like the overall design happening here. It has a floating type of touchscreen design here and the reach and overall looking at it when we were in our road trip, I mean, you're just driving down the road, you glance at your navigation, you don't have to look down for anything. And all, all of these buttons and everything, you don't have to look at it to know how it feels. You know, you turn it all the way to the left if you want it cold, all the way to the right if you want it hot, fan speed higher or lower. You don't have to be looking or touching any any buttons that aren't tactile everything inside of here is tactile i mean you press everything and it's easy to use and i just really like how hyundai 
kept it simplistic but still having a very techy and futuristic aspect to it. Looking at your dashboard here, you're not going to see anything too out extraordinary out there. It's just going to be a 3.5 inch TFT display in the center. It is going to be digital. It is going to be monochromatic for the most part. You have all of your different driving assistances on this page. You have your tension level as well as your tire pressure. If you come over here, you can get to your different driver assistance technologies and it will show you your warning time, your driving, driver attention warning, as well as your forward safety, lane safety, blind spot safety, all of those different safety features which come standard uh, standard equipment on the Hyundai Venue, on the base SE model with manual transmission. So that's really a neat feature. It's gonna come with forward collision warning, lane keep assist, pedestrian detection, all of that is standard equipment. I just wish Hyundai in the future would offer blind spot monitoring as standard, because if you want blind spot monitoring, you'll have to step up to higher end SEL trim levels. But instead of your gauge cluster here, you have a tachometer, your speedometer on the right, a leather wrapped steering wheel with four spokes. This center spoke is nice to put your hand inside of if you want to. You also have your contrasting stitching running in between there. Now coming all the way down here in the lower portion of your dash, you have this portion that swoops down in the same color so it's lots of contrasting, especially if you really want your interior to not feel as claustrophobic, I definitely recommend going for this beige-ish gray and black two-tone interior. So right behind your gear selector, you have a drive mode selector. If you go for the SEL trim level and above, you'll have a total of three different drive modes. And those different drive modes will be shown over here in your dashboard display, right in between your tachometer and your speedometer. So you have your normal mode, your sport mode, and your snow mode. Also, you have available heated front seats, no heated rear seats, but I see a, quite a few blank buttons here behind your heated seats. So this makes me think that Hyundai is possibly considering offering cold seats sometime in the future. Behind there, you have a traditional handbrake, which is pretty much typical in this type of class. And you also have two decent sized cup holders and you have a cubby up here to throw your phone or your keys, your wallet, anything like that. All right, so looking over here on the overall dashboard design, I really like how it has these silver accents around all of your AC vents, and it's similar to that rectangular shape found over here in your door handle, and what's found on your taillights and your headlights. Everything has that rectangular, quirky, fun personality aspect going on. And fitting in with the fun personality, you can see that there's quite a few colors happening right here in the dashboard. This does not come with the vehicle. This is the Drive and Be Driven glove box test because this vehicle has a two-tier glove box. So up here, we're able to fit a total of five Playhouse balls. And then if you come down here, it's gonna come shooting open, bouncing all over the place. But you actually fit a total of 26 Playhouse balls inside of here. And your glove box is going to have a smooth finish. It's not going to have a light and it's not going to be felt lined or damp it's just going to be a traditional glove box but at least you know and can rest assured that you can fit quite a few things inside of there and right over here you have a sensor armrest the sensor armrest is not going to come standard unfortunately on all of your venue models if you go for the base se model this is not going to be here it's going to be non-existent if you go for the sel model you will have this armrest but it's not going to have this cool feature of moving forward and backwards. If you want that forward and backwards functionality, we'll have to step up to the SEL with the convenience package. But all in all, looking inside of here, you can fit a total of 12 Playhouse balls. So it's a decent size. I definitely would have liked to have been a little bit on the bigger side, but Hyundai pretty much makes up for that by having it slide forward and backwards. And I find it really weird how a lot of subcompact utility vehicles do not offer a center armrest, but Hyundai offers it as optional equipment. And not only is it an armrest, but you can also fit stuff inside of it, which is pretty neat. And for some reason, a lot of competitors like to skimp out on that feature, but I honestly really like to rest my elbow on something like a soft leather wrapped accenting right here in the center console. I just really wish that in the future, Hyundai will offer some type of leather wrapping or maybe just a soft polyurethane texturing on the door for you to rest your elbow on as well. But at least you have this leather wraps armrest in the center. Now coming up here, you do not have an automatic dimming mirror. It is going to be manual dimming. And then you have incandescent interior lights and all of your SOS and Blue Link features will be located up here. Typically it's located over here in this portion, but since Hyundai does not offer an automatic dimming mirror, it will all be located right over here. And then right in front of that will be your sunroof control. This venue has a sunroof, which is a pretty decent size, and it has the tilting feature as well as the sliding feature. It's not a full panoramic sunroof. We'd definitely like to see Hyundai offer that. 
So looking at the sun visor here, you have a mirror right there as well as an incandescent light. And when your incandescent light is on and you close it, you don't have to worry about it still being on because once you close it, it turns off. And that's gonna be the exact same case over here on the passenger side, you open it up, you have a nice mirror, a little clip here, you wanna clip business cards, pictures, or anything like that. Turn on your light, close it, and you don't have to worry about the light still being on. So it's definitely a neat feature. All right, so let's look at the rear seats inside of the Hyundai Venue. Just like the front seats, your door panel is gonna be just the same. You have hard touch plastics up here, as well as over here and in the lower fascia, pretty much exactly like what's found up on the front. And you have this really cool door handle that I really like the design of. But let's go ahead and hop on inside of the back seat. All right, so let's talk about the back seat comfort inside of the 2020 Hyundai Venue. So sitting in the back seat, it's actually pretty spacious inside of here, especially as far as headroom goes. I mean, this vehicle's roof line does not slope down too bad. So as far as headroom goes, you have lots of space here. Also, I really like how the seats are located a decent amount off the ground. So you have good lower thigh support, which is always a plus. And as far as foot space and legroom goes, it's also very class competitive. You have lots of foot space under your front driver's seat since it has a height adjustability. And as far as legroom goes, you have just around 34.3 inches of legroom, which is a decent amount of space back here. Despite the venue having a shorter wheelbase and shorter overall length than the majority of the competition, once you actually hop on inside of the cabin, it does not feel that small at all, especially when you are sitting behind someone that is six feet tall. You can see that you have a six foot tall person in the front seat and then a six foot tall person in the back seat sitting right behind them and they're not gonna be complaining at all because it has an adequate amount of space. Now, as far as interior volume goes, you are gonna be looking at 91.9 cubic feet of space. So it definitely has a very open and airy feel instead of here, especially with the addition of the sunroof on this SEL premium model. I would have liked to have seen Hyundai offer a panoramic sunroof possibly in the future. Once again, maybe on a higher and trim level, but I mean, this normal sunroof is definitely a plus to have, especially in such a subcompact utility vehicle class at a price tag this low. What's really gonna make this vehicle pop are the bright colors and just the overall appearance that it has on the outside and the spaciousness and practicality that it boasts on the inside. And I have this front seat adjusted relatively to my height. I could have had it a little bit further up, especially since the dashboard has such a nice shape to it. But you could see here, maybe this will be a, a passenger that's about 6'4", 6'3". And here I am sitting at six feet right behind them and I can sit back here with no issues whatsoever. Now this seat does not have any height adjustability, but you can rest assured that you will still have room underneath your seats, which is nice. You have this mat pocket right here, which is only going to be on your passenger side, not on your driver's side, unfortunately. And then right here, you have no rear AC vents inside of the venue, not even as optional equipment, but definitely would have been a nice addition, especially down here in South Florida. But once you're actually back here, like I said earlier, you have a good amount of thigh support under here. I like how the seat is a nice height off the ground, but you do not have a center armrest, unfortunately. I would have definitely would have liked to have seen that. It's surprising because up front, Hyundai offers a nice leather wrapped armrest that has not lots of sliding adjustability, but back here, you do not have any cup holders in the middle. Also, that's another thing I'm noticing. There's no cup holders right here in the center or in a center armrest. Back here, usually cars have something that folds down. You can rest your arm on and put, cup hold and put cups in. Fortunately, that's not here, but you still have bottle holders on the side down here, but it's only gonna be a bottle holder, no type of storage cubby back here. So all in all, I would definitely would like to see Hyundai implement a little bit more of a practical, versatile storage solution in the back seat, especially considering this is a crossover SUV. The 2020 Hyundai Venue was a surprisingly good offering inside of the subcompact utility vehicle segment. Despite it boasting a much smaller footprint than the majority of the vehicles in its class, it still has that fun, quirky personality and a spacious interior that is right in line with the majority of the competitors, surprisingly enough. Also, the price tag is just right for those people who are looking for their first car or those who just want a nice car that has good personality, good fuel economy, and still will turn head. All right, well, there you have it. That was my initial walk around review of the 2020 Hyundai Venue. All in all, I'm quite impressed with what Hyundai has to offer to the subcompact utility vehicle segment. I definitely cannot wait until I could get the venue for a more extended period of time where I can give you guys an even more in-depth video. 
Well, that's it for this video. Comment and tell me what you would like to see in future videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. This is Marcus, and thanks for watching Drive and Be Driven. Keep it positive, and I'll see you next time. You can become a Drive and Be Driven driver today. Just simply click the subscribe button and you will become a part of the Drive and Be Driven circle. Subscribing will allow you to stay up to date with the Drive and Be Driven YouTube channel. Thank you to all of my current Drive and Be Driven drivers for driving me towards my goals and dreams. Stay subscribed for more awesome videos like this one.